Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last section, we introduced the Python library SQL Alchemy and saw how it could be used to radically simplify querying the database in our application. This is the start of section 3, Advanced View Usage. In this section, we will be using the data from SQL Alchemy in conjunction with Jinja, Flask's templating language, to make our pages dynamic. We will also use WT Forms, a new Python library, to create secure and easy to validate web forms. This is video one, loops and control structures. In this video, we will go over the syntax for if and for statements in Jinja, and we will also cover what a macro is in Jinja and how to use it. To learn the concepts of this section, we are going to be working off of static pages that are very similar to the mockup that was shown in section one. We will go through each page and make the data based on the database rather than the static HTML. I'm going to launch Python's built-in HTTP server to serve these static pages. We have the home page, which will show the latest movies in order of their release date. There is a page for each actor, which contains their personal information as well as their roles in movies. It also displays their directorships, if they have had any. Also, each movie has its own page with links to each actor who played in the movie, as well as a link to the director. And there is also a page for blog and a page for each blog post. As you can see, all these pages are simple HTML and are based off of hard-coded data. So let's start by making all the routes in our app.py file. For now, each one will just return the rendered template file. The actor, movie and post routes will also take the ID value from the URL which will be passed to get query to easily create URLs to a specific object's page from our templates. We can create those queries now as they are rather simple. Make sure to use the get underscore or underscore 404 to automatically handle missing pages. Let's also pass the objects to render underscore template function. We can begin modifying our templates with the home page. From what we learned in the last section, creating a query that returns the five latest movies released is easy. Then we have to pass the returned list to the render underscore template function so our template has access to the data. The first template control structure we will learn is the for loop, which acts a lot like the Python for loop. But one of the first mistakes that a lot of people make when first looking at Jinja is thinking that Jinja works just like PHP and that it's just Python code in the templates. This is not the case. Let's see what happens when we try to call the len Python global function. We see the internal server error. That's not super verbose. Let's fix that by enabling debug mode in Flask. The best way to enable debugging when using Flask script is to set debug to none in config. So when we run our code in dev environment, it is being run in debug mode. But when we run our code in production environment, the debug mode will be turned off. Now you can see that the template won't render because Jinja doesn't know what the len function is. Jinja was designed to be as close to Python code as possible, but it isn't actually running Python, so you can't run any code as you want in the templates. What you can run is any method on past objects that return values, which can be converted to strings using the string Python function. Great. The for loop is started like so. Note that the for loop is constructed with braces and percentage signs, rather than double braces as is the case with variable substitution. Just like Python, the for loop works on iterators rather than C-style numeric loops. There is also a closing tag we have to add to end the loop. So what our loop is doing is looping over our list of latest movies and giving the body of the loop access to each movie model through the movie variable. Now we can replace our placeholder code with this loop. Copy the repeated code and put it in the body of the loop.
and then replace the text with the variable substitution syntax that we have seen before. You can see us using URL underscore for function. URL underscore for is a very convenient function for generating URLs. We are passing our view function name and its parameters. We are also using truncate filter to show only the first 700 characters. Notice movie.summary here. Our model definition is missing it. Let's add it. Please note that for the model to work, you may need to add the column to your database schema or simply create a new database and call db.create underscore all like we did in the previous section. I have prepared my database in advance and I have entered in my own fake movie data in my database to demo the site's UI. Now, if you load the home page, you should see five movies ordered by release date. Data about the current for loop can be accessed through the loop variable. There is a bunch of helpful variables, out of which we need the loop.index, which is the current iteration for the loop, 1-indexed. If in our template we add the following variable substitution with loop.index to each movie title, the page will render with the movie's position in the list next to the title. We also have access to the first and last attributes, which return true if the current element is the first or last item in the iterable, respectively. And finally, there is the length attribute, which returns the length of the iterable being looped over. So we can use the same logic we used for the home page to add functionality to the blog page, add a query to get the blog posts, and then in the blog.html page, let's create a for loop to add all the posts on the page with links to the post page, we also add title, formatted publish date, and truncated post text. And we can do a similar thing for the individual posts pages by looping over any comments attached to the posts and displaying them. Great! We also display information about post, and we display tags with a simple for loop. Now let's turn to the actor page to learn the next control structure in Jinja. We can easily replace the hard-coded data with variable substitutes and replace our roles and directorships tables with for loops. So let's do that now. Okay, our new actor page looks good, but we don't want to show the death date section if the person isn't dead. So let's go back to the template and fix this with an if statement. Add this code where we define the death date section. As you can see, other than the ending tag, it is just like a Python if statement. Now, if the actor's death day field is empty, the death date section will no longer show up. We can also define else if statements to go along with the original if statement, like so. But that isn't necessary right now, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Finally, let's quickly add the code to movie.html. It is very similar to other templates. Here we have a block with information about a movie with a bunch of variable substitutions. Again, we use the URL underscore for to generate URLs dynamically. And here we have the for loop that generates a table with information about actors. Now let's update the navbar by adding a link to the blog and test our code. The code doesn't quite work. The reason is that last section we added comment model with name field for username. We actually want not just username, but actual user underscore ID to link two tables together. Let's quickly fix this. So, Note that you may need to recreate your tables using db.create underscore all. Or you could simply get my pre-populated database from the course GitHub page. Great! Now let's cover the feature that makes Jinja one of the most powerful templating engines, macros. Macros are like a function in Python, but instead of returning a value, a macro replaces the macro call with the template text inside of the macro. This allows template declarations or HTML that is commonly repeated to be only set in one location. 
we have formatted dates using strf time function in several places. Let's put it in macros. Just like in other parts of templates, in macros you can use HTML code, for loops, if conditions, and variable substitutions. Our macro is going to be simple and contain only variable substitution. To make the macro available to all of the pages in our project, let's take this code into the base.html file to create our macro. We will store this code inside a macro block and call this macro input. This macro will be called with a datatime object. Perfect. Let's replace uses of strf time with our macro. And now on our blog pages, you can see that our macro's HTML is injected into the page where we called it. Awesome! In this video, we successfully turned static HTML pages into a dynamic website using Jinja with SQL Alchemy.